Welcome players to how to putt like a bouse. Now, a lot of you may be wondering why you suck at putting. And the first question I always ask someone is, how often do you practice and for how long do you practice? And the majority of the answer is never. So my advice to you is to practice. Just get to a putting green and start hitting some putts. Okay, Matt, wise ass, thank you for that. But the fact of the matter is, that's all it takes, is practice. Everybody goes to the range, they do a bit of scrape, scrape and hit, and scrape and hit, and scrape and hit, but nobody comes to the putting green ever. This place, Forest City, that I'm at now in Johor Bahru, has got the biggest putting green I've ever seen. There's a driving range back there, there's five people on there. There's this putting green here, which is phenomenal, perfect condition, and it's me and J Mac in the background. Now, okay. So you decided you're gonna start practicing putting. Okay, great, what do you do? First step players is if, that your, if your putting sucks, I highly suggest getting your wedge and learning to putt with your wedge on the practice green. When I do drills, I like to do drills that will teach me to putt without any techniques. I have to execute the drill by having a perfect execution. That's, that's all there is to it. You have to teach yourself how to do it. There's no special formula, there's no special stroke. There's a million ways to stroke a putter, but there's only one way to get these things right. I like to take the wedge and I like to putt with the wedge because you can only putt with a wedge if you do it perfectly. And to get the ball, ball rolling purely, you have to hit it perfectly on the edge of this wedge. Now, yeah, you may be thinking, what the hell are you talking about, man? But this thing is going to teach you feel, it's going to teach you to stroke it, because you can't slap at it, you can't use your wrists, you can't flip at the ball on this drill. And on top of that, in terms of contrast therapy, you're gonna maybe like this after a few putts, but once you pick your putter back up, you're gonna absolutely love your putter again, and you're gonna putt better. That's all there is to it. So, there's no special technique, use your putting grip, stroke the ball back and forth, but you'll find out very soon what's wrong and you're gonna to have to fix that by yourself I can't tell you how to do it but once your brain develops the ability to think that way you can then teach yourself how to stroke the ball now another part of the wedge drill is that you actually learn to relax because you have lower expectations when you're using the wedge to putt with and that, that you can transfer over to your putting with your putter because you'll start to develop a bit of a looser grip because tension in the grip and tension in the arms kills your feel. Number one killer for putting is tension. So we want to develop a nice relaxed soft grip and very easy stroke. So if you use the wedge, the wedge drill, that's going to train you to just be relaxed because you're not using your putter so you don't expect anything. And once you go back to your putter, you love your putter and you contrast it with the wedge that you are using and it's just so much better. That's a great drill to develop some feel and to love your putter again. Now what you can't see from behind here is the basic concept of putting. I'll show you that from the side view. In order to get the ball rolling on the line you want and to continue with the pace and to get to the hole, you have to accelerate through the ball, decelerating means the ball goes poofies and ends up usually short right and halfway to the hole and it's the most frustrating thing in the world. So we want to accelerate through the ball, which means whatever distance you take it back, you have to take it through double the distance. Now it's not a necessarily a formula, but if you keep that in mind on the practice screen, it's going to help you in the rounds to actually execute the putt better. Because a lot of people decelerate because they take it too far back and the brain takes over and says, uh -uh, if you're, gonna, if you're gonna accelerate through this ball from back here, you're gonna go way past. So you automatically, through your brain, sending signals to your body, it's got nothing to do with skill. Your brain knows. It just goes, no bruh, we can't follow through with speed because your backswing is too long. So I'm going to decelerate and that's when you hit those poofy putts. Now watch, watch from this angle how the backstroke is normally about half the distance of the forward swing.
honestly players, there are millions of ways of putting a golf ball. So I cannot teach you how to stroke the golf ball. I can only show you some basic fundamentals that I use when my putting is bad to improve it back to being semi-decent and better than mediocre. Now, you may have an open stance, a closed stance, a narrow stance, a wide stance. A I don't know, whatever you have, it's fine. There's just some basic fundamentals to remember with putting. And all good putters, their hands move, their hands move forward toward the target at all times. There's never any of that flicking and stopping. It's always a stroke where your hands are moving forward. The other thing is you want to remember the putter head going back that distance and double the distance through. So whatever distance you take it back, it's double the distance through to keep you accelerating. If you're decelerating on putting, you will never, ever be a good putter. Beyond that, the rest is just using these drills to get the feel, to understand break, to get a pure roll, and to get the ball started on your line. If you can get a ball started on your line at the right speed, <laughs> you hold putts. That's putting. Basically, line and speed. The correct line with the correct speed. How you do it, it's up to you. Okay, so you fall in love with your putter again. You've got the basic technique of taking it back a certain amount and following through double that amount. Now the point is, how do we hit a pure putt? Okay, so now we need to know how to hit a pure putt. And to hit a pure putt, we use Mike Malaska's drill of drawing a line all the way around the ball and putting the ball down with the line lined up like that and then stroking the ball so that the ball rolls over end over end. If you're cutting across the ball, if you're not making a pure stroke, that line is going to not, wobble is okay, but it's going to actually start turning like that and you'll see the line completely goes off straight. It just starts going like that. Now my putting at the moment sucks a little bit. So these are the things I come back to in order to get better at putting again. So I'm go I like to do this end over end drill. All you do is you line the ball up, you line the ball up anywhere you want. It doesn't have to be at a hole. It just has to be on a carpet or on a green, somewhere where the ball will roll out and you can see if it's going end over end. If it's not going end over end, you need to figure out your own way how to get it end over end. Then you've hit a pure putt. When you can start doing that, you're hitting pure putts. You're teaching yourself. Well, this is a very good aid on learning how to get the ball rolling end over end. I don't recommend that you line your ball up with this line if you are not a proficient putter. If you're taking 36 plus putts around and you are hitting the ball all over the show, this is great to train yourself, but you're not proficient enough to be able to line this line up perfectly to where you want to go and it's probably screwing you in your putting. If you're a very good putter and you may be insecure about a line, this is great to line up on your three, four, five, six footers if you are a proficient putter already with a pure stroke. But if you're just learning, this one is going to screw you more than it's going to help you. So don't do that to start with. I would just do it on the practice facilities and then the rest of the time you play, use something that's not marked. Now players, there's another fantastic drill you can use and that's the ruler drill. You get yourself either a three or four foot ruler made of steel. You find yourself a nice flat area, not too, no break on the putt or at home on the carpet. And you take some balls, you put it at the end of that steel ruler and you teach yourself to putt that ball along the entire length of the ruler. Now, yeah, you know, what's the point? The main point is if you have a pure stroke from getting the ball rolling end over end, and if you have the fundamental of accelerating through the ball, this drill is gonna help you to get it started online and stay online, to really pure putts. So you do this drill, and then what you can do is you can either just put the ball at the end of the, the ruler in the little hole and putt it, or you can double up your work and put it down the center of the ruler like this on that in the hole, and get it rolling end over end, the whole length of the ruler. Now if you can do that 10 in a row, you can go to bed. Do this before bed, and 
the only time you can actually go to sleep is if you can do 10 in a row. Otherwise, no sleep. The best part about this drill is that you're also teaching yourself. So you've got to do whatever it takes to get that ball along that ruler. And if you can do that, then believe me, you can trust your putting stroke. It doesn't matter how you do it, as long as you can do it and can replicate it on the course. Sometimes I get a bit too handsy with my putting and I, I may flail the arms out which I'm if you want to putt with your arms out like this that's fine as long as you can keep everything stable for me I find I get too handsy when I do that so when I feel a bit handsy what I like to do is let my arms hang down in my putting posture grab it with my right hand and then put the left hand over and if it's down there at the metal on the day that's fine if it's up there that's fine wherever I feel the least tension and from there that's a very light grip, like a feather light grip that. And when I putt like this, I have much more feel and control, especially to get the ball started on the right line. When you have too much tension, you get too stiff and stabby and you have no feel at all. The, the, the tension you can normally see in the white knuckle syndrome people get. On top of that, for longer putts especially, I like to focus on just rocking the shoulders back and forth. That, that distance control on the long putts comes from rocking the shoulders back. So if I rock the shoulders back there and follow through there, I know that's going to be a certain distance. If I go to there and through there, I know it's going to be a certain kind of distance. Distance control but can be controlled with the backswing. That's all there is to putting. Now when you practice your putting guys, use the same balls that you play golf with. It's pointless using pinnacles or Wilson staff or anything else that's hard if you play Pro V's or Chrome Soft on the golf course and the same way the same way the other way so if you practice your putting with a Pro V but you're playing something like a Nike Chaos or whatever they have it's not going to transfer over you have to get the same feeling um, from your practice sessions to the course and not necessarily the only the same ball but a similar feeling ball mm. just don't go urethane on the practice green and Serlin on the course or the other way around now a lot okay. of the time with putting is that you, you get so tense because you don't know how to putt. And like I said, I enjoy contrast therapies. And when I have a knot in my muscle, I go to a dry needle expert who just sticks a needle into the, into the knot of the muscle, which a knot actually is just a spasm in your muscle. So if she sticks that needle into the spasm, what it does is it makes it spasm to the point where it can no longer spasm anymore. And it's forced to release. And that you can, that you can release by doing the wedge drills. That you can do by doing any of these drills is to just release all the tension you have with putting and focus on something else besides holding a putt. So with these drills, you're gonna be focusing on getting the stroke right with the wedge. You're gonna be focusing on rolling the balls end over end. You're gonna be worried about getting the ball started on line and you're gonna worry just about rocking the shoulders back and forth to control your distance. It's all, it's all kind of like third party stuff. It's not pure focus ball hole. It's about just letting go of the demons and trusting yourself by teaching yourself. This is the most valuable drill you will ever learn. This is the circle drill. You start from a foot from the hole or two feet from the hole and you move backwards a foot each time. You put six balls, ten balls, eight balls, whatever, around the hole the same distance and you work in a direction that suits your your dexterity so if you're right-handed you go anti-clockwise so what this does is it grooves the feeling of making short putts we start everything in golf from the hole backwards make your one footers make all your two footers make all your three footers make more most most of your four footers and make 
a lot of your five footers and golf will immediately become easier. You're not so scared about your lag putts. You're not so scared about having lag putts. You're not so scared about getting up and down because you can get in the hole on a three foot, four foot putt 90% of the time. big poppers when you do this drill take the pin out I don't care what science says science can lick my little balls that it's better to keep the pin in when you putt there's no better sound to a golfer than the ball hitting the bottom of the cup if you want to get confidence with your putting get that sound ingrained in your ears so that you expect it when you make putts now how do you measure the one two three footers use your putter this thing is 35 36 34 inches long that's pretty much three feet there's a foot to the grip Halfway between the grip and the club head is a foot. Just put it down, put the ball down. Spin it around the hole and put the balls in a circle. It's not rocket science. Now you can start doing this drill on a flat piece of green, but I highly recommend moving around a slope because then you'll learn left to right, right to left, downhill, uphill, all in one drill. Once you can make all your three footers, all your two footers, that's when you start moving back a distance. I'd say maximum five, six feet. Don't go into the seven foot range, eight foot range and expect to hold a lot because even tour pros don't even hold that much. Don't expect to hold everything because you're delusional because even tour pros don't make as many putts as you think they make. The only thing you see is highlights and the leaders making putts all day long. You don't see the guy in the back of the field taking 36 putts, shooting an 83 and missing the cut. Pros in general do not make as many putts as you think they do and if you're putting that pressure on yourself to make putts like a pro when you're not practicing putting like a pro you're crazy so do these drills get great inside five feet because everyone can do five footers everyone can be as good as a pro from five feet get the chipping right chip it close put it in the hole lag putt to within four feet put that in the hole your scores are going to drop like first period math and for anyone who thinks they can't be as good as a pro with a putter and a wedge in their hand shut the up and putt Your eyes, your mind, the line and the putter must all agree. You have to have everything in agreement. If you stand over a putt and you're not sure where you aimed, you're not going to make it. If you stand over a putt and your eyes feel like you aimed left and you should be going right, you're not going to make it. When you stand over a putt and your putter face feels like it's left, your eyes feel like it's right and your mind says it's straight, you're not going to make the putt. All of these things have to be in agreement. So how do we line all these things up? So what we do then is we read the putt, we pick our line, we find something on the line, okay? So if your line is on this putt, maybe a ball outside the right, I don't know, I haven't hit it. I'm going to find something on that line, but I have to, I have to actually envision the line, how the ball will track back, track to the hole, and then I back, backtrack back from the hole to my ball. So I see that line, almost like a video game where you see that yellow line um, on the video game showing where the slope's going. Now with that, you pick something along that line, you find it a foot in front of your ball, so that you line your putter up, you line your putter face up to something in front of the ball. Then you have to get your eyes to be in agreement with where your putter's lined up. If you have to move your head there or there, it doesn't matter as long as your eyes feel comfortable that the putter is lined up where you want it to go. This thing with the mirror getting your, your eyes directly over the ball is a lot of crap because if you someone who puts better like this or puts better like this or like that it makes no damn difference your eyes have to line up to this they have to line up to the alignment aid your mind must agree with that and your eyes and the line that you've chosen once you can commit to all of those things you make putts so on this one I have a little mark over here I'm gonna aim it to I'm gonna line my putter up Okay, my eyes feel good. It feels like I'm lined up where I want. And if it's not, I just move my head to a point where that feels 
like I'm lined up to my spot. Then I feel comfortable, I lose the tension, I trust the line and I make a stroke. Okay, it's the wrong line, but that's a perfect, perfect putt. Now over here, let me take a bit of time to read this. I see a mark up here. I'm gonna line my putter face up to that mark. Alignment aid, looking in that direction. Eyes in agreement. My mind is at ease, it's trusting it. My tension goes away. I get feel and I jam the putt. Now this, this putter of mine has a very small alignment aid. I actually prefer something something quite clear like j max putter over here with a black a black putter with a white line it's very clear um, if i didn't play with this i'd probably have a mallet because of the longer alignment aid which does help you a lot especially if your alignment's bad it helps your eyes to agree with the line that you've chosen and to line the putter face up now let's see if this works Okay, that works. And then when you're walking up to something you see on the line, you might see something closer to your ball on the line. Pick that thing. It's much easier to line up to something an inch or two or six in front of the ball than a foot or two. So if you see that line and you can suddenly pick up something closer to you, line your putter face up to that and then get your eyes aligned with your putter and then get your mind to agree to everything and then stroke the putt. On the course and you have time other guys are playing use that time efficiently so when your putt's there and everyone else is playing still chipping on go read your putt get committed to the line watch it go in and out back and forth along the line select a spot and then when it's your turn to putt you've committed everything you feel good you line up all those things your your eyes your mind your line your putter face everything must agree and then you take the stroke this is going to hold you a lot more putts but don't rush. If you rush these things, your putting sucks. That's why my birdie putts don't go in because I seem to rush them more than my par putts. Now, a lot of the time when we're putting on these grainy greens, and it also happens on bent grass, not as much, but there is a grain. You can see a burn mark over here on, on tropical greens and Bermuda greens. Now that means that the grass is growing toward that mark. So the roots are, the roots are showing here and the tips are growing over into the hole and on this side are dying. So that means the grass is growing left to right on a putt from down there. Now the important part when you have these putts is that you have to envision the ball actually dying toward the hole. So when, you get, when the ball gets toward the hole and losing pace, the grain takes it. It's almost like surfing. So if you had to go into the ocean and the wave is moving toward the shore and you're swimming across it, it's going to move you with minimal effort very quickly toward the shore and the opposite direction is the same thing if you're, gonna, if you're swimming directly into the waves in, and the current of the ocean it's going to hold you up big time and if you're swimming with it it's going to speed you up that's the exact same thing with grain on grainy greens now with this type of putt over here that J Mac is so kindly setting up my assistante I often, especially left to right, underread them and I can't commit to the line and trust it enough to let that last bit of grain just take it in almost 90 degrees to the hole. Now it's very easy to just see the line as left to right and then the entrance is here. The entrance is not here. If the grain is here and it's dying toward the hole, envision the putt, but remember the entrance of the hole changes and that means the width of the hole is shooting in a new direction so instead of seeing left lip and seeing this narrow entry here which is impossible to hit by the way you're gonna lip out more times than you than you make it you have to see the whole entrance of the the whole the entire entrance of the hole changing so a straight putt the entrance is here on this putt left to right if it's a big break it can actually almost be 90 degrees so that's where the ball will come in you can lip out from there you can lip in from there okay if you're going straight at that firm, you're going to hit that and you're going to lip out further down. So you want to make the ball die into the hole and ride the wave. Like I told you, on this putt, the wave's going that way, the waves are going that way, and you are surfing that way. So you're surfing on the side of the current. And as you lose speed, just like in surfing, your board is going to start going almost 90 degrees back to the shore. 
So envision the, the entrance of that hole changing. Okay? Okay, that's what most guys are gonna do. They're gonna just hit straight at the hole. <laughs> They're not anticipating the break. And what happens is they end up just hitting shuris all day long. Okay, hit me another one going left edge. Just focus left edge. Okay, so we started at left edge and the break now at the end there, it just goes almost 90 degrees. These are not the grainiest of greens. I think it's a bit of a, a, a Pepsilim green like they use at Thai Country Club in Panya Indra. Very high quality and rolls more like bent. On uh, grainier Bermuda, that, that putt he just hit down there would be another six inches to the right, 90 degrees. Okay, now J-Mac, hit me one around those tees. Okay, look how he's trusted that, okay? Now a little bit firm, but not bad. Now he's got a, a ball that's gone past the hole on the high side, so he has a read back on that one and a half footer or one footer. When you hit it over there on the left, you've hit it past the hole on the front side, so you don't even get a read of what's happening with your putt. Essentially, you're now guessing and you're frustrated, and then you're thinking about missing the next one because you couldn't even see how it broke. So another one. Perfect, look at that putt. Okay, cool, so we, we may not have the right line, but at least you're training your brain not to just go boo boo ba ba straight at the left edge. You're just trying to train your brain in this exercise. Whether you make the putt or not is, is not a problem, as long as you're getting it to die into the hole, as long as you're not booming it past on the low side like a poopo. So if you can get that feeling and trust of going out wide and letting the, gr the grain and the grass and everything bring the ball back to the hole and you trusting gravity, the cosmos, the thunderstorm to bring that ball back. You're gonna make more putts, but you don't trust yourself because you never practice. So what do you, what do you think they should do, J-Man? Are you listening? Hey, yeah, listening. What Can should I they go? do? Have trusted to just- Watch the storm, bro. Yeah. Practice! So this is the type of putt I'm talking about where you have to go to three or four dimensional thinking because this putt is a right to lefter, but because it's into the grain and toward the end it goes cross grain, the ball is almost gonna come in at 90 degrees. The entrance to the hole moves from what you might be looking at from down there, you might be looking at like inside right. The entrance of the hole almost moves to 90 degrees on the left side here and from that side from the right. So that the ball is actually gonna enter here, not there, here on the side of the hole. Watch this. When you're putting down a hill, you have to hit the ball softer. Now the best way to do that is to just envision a hole on your line that's short of the real hole, an imaginary one. So when you're looking at where you're going to putt, look at your line and then find an imaginary hole along that line. So this is going to take some vision, so it takes practice, so hit the practice screen and on downhill putts, see a hole short of the hole. And then once you find your hole, when you do your practice stroke, take it back and forward on the power level that you feel you need to hit that new imaginary hole, not the actual hole. Look at your imaginary hole and practice the distance control you need for the new hole.
Now when you are hitting uphill, it's the exact same thing, but you look beyond the hole for your new imaginary hole. You look on the line that you're taking and imagine it going through the hole to your finishing point a foot past the hole. Then focus on that point. That's where the new hole is moved to. If you're into the grain, you have to adjust it even more because grainy greens like this, you'll find that if you're hitting into the grain, it's like Velcro that actually holds your ball back or like a wave. So if you, or the tide of the ocean. So if you're swimming into the tide, you're gonna, you're gonna be slowed up big time. So if you're into the grain and up the hill, for, up, for the uphill, you're gonna move the hole back a certain amount. And if you're into the grain as well, which you generally are, you move it back a bit further. Now on bent grass, this doesn't affect it as much. So it's a bit simpler, it's a one dimensional thing. It's literally move it behind the hole. But if you're playing on grainy greens like in the tropics here, move it behind the hole and another couple inches further back for the grain. On these short ones, it's very tempting to just boom it straight in the back of the jar, which works on, on shorter putts up the hill, which I'll show you. But for these kind of trickly ones down the hill, and especially down grain, you're gonna find that if you do that and you miss the hole, you're gonna have a very long putt back. And if you lip out, it can actually catapult you way further than where you started. So on the short ones like this, you have to really commit to your line. So once you've found your line and you can clearly see it, you want to work out the pace that's going to get the ball to just die into the hole. I mean, it's better to just lag these ones for me into the hole than to boom them. Because once I boom them and I just miss my entry point by a little bit, I'm dead. Now, if you're going softer, you're going to increase the entry to the hole. So if you're going to hit a boomer, you're going to reduce the entry to just there or just there. But if you're going to baby it in, but if you baby it in, you move the entrance to the hole from, like, let's say that's straight. Let's say it breaks it all right to left. You now increase the ability to enter the hole from just going in the side door to actually coming in and lipping into the hole instead of lipping out. Because if you hit it too hard, it's, it's moving with too much pace to be able to just drop in. But if you're babying it in, it can get up to the lip on either side, even way on the right or way on the left and still drop in. But if you're booming it, you never give it that opportunity. So you, you, let's say the hole is that wide, let's say the hole is that wide, and you boom it. You literally can only come into the hole on the inside left and inside right and the middle of the hole. Anything else is just gonna lip out or completely miss the hole. But if you die it into the hole, you baby it in, it then shifts the entrance so that the ball can come in and the grain can take it and the slope can take it and it can enter in the front, the front left, front right, all the way on the right, all the way on the left, and even sometimes if it breaks enough, the back door. Now that's how it works on these kind of grainy greens, bent grass greens, um, kind of the same thing, um, depending on the pace, if they're a bit slower, I mean you can boom them still, because the grain doesn't affect it as much, but that's how it works on tropical greens. Okay, the downhill left to righter, or just the side slope left to righter, is one of the tougher putts for us right-handers. We always under-read it. So you have to train your brain to be able to over-read it. And that way you'll miss on the high side and you'll enjoy putting a lot more because you give yourself a chance to get the ball in the hole. Now, often, I, for me, the left to righter is not the most comfortable putt. I like it when it's a bit quicker on the greens because I can just touch it and it's like being an artist that just gets the ball into the hole. But on these kind of slower greens like this today, they're probably running about a, a nine, maybe less. On the practice green here, it's a bit more difficult, but essentially the concept is the same. You want to envision the line. And when you can envision a line and you can trust that the, the break is going to be taken and the pace is right, you can hit good putts. When I, I used to be a proper crappy putter and I would just miss putts all over the show. But the way I uh, became much better at putting and a bit better than mediocre is that I would start at the hole. Where's the new entry point based on your line? Mine's there. So when I see that new line, I look, like to look back from the hole to my ball and find what line do I need and what pace do I need to be able to get that ball to roll into that new entry point. When you're looking at a narrow entry point, 
of just inside left you screw yourself because you have to hit it harder to get it to that entry point now what i'm saying is hit it softer so it dies into the hole so when it gets to the hole the wave takes it back to shore and it can actually lip in on the left or lip in on the right Now let's take a look at the ones up the hill. Up the hill is the opposite. You can actually boom these. Now, when you're coming down the hill, down grain on the short ones, it's going to generally break a lot more than normal because you're giving it more chance to take the break at a slower pace. So when you hit the ball softer, it moves slower, which increases the chance to use the break. Think of it as like in a wave. If you're in the ocean and you're swimming across the wave, if you're going quick, like in a speedboat, you can skim right over that and it'll still take you off to the right but not as much now if you were swimming in the ocean or on a surfboard and you start slowing down that wave just moves you toward the shore very quickly now up the hill it's the same just the opposite thing is that you get held up by the grain and by the wave so when you're hitting it harder you're giving it less opportunity to give you break left to right and you have to hit it harder to get through that that, sh that tide that's coming straight into you. So you can imagine like with a speedboat, if you're moving faster, you're gonna skim over the break. So the same with the uphill putts, up the hill, you can hit it much firmer and on the short ones inside six feet, you can look to hit the back of the jar because you're gonna take out some break, you're gonna hit it firmer, give it a confident strike and you'll make more putts. Babying these ones or decelerating on these ones is the death because that grain is just gonna grip the ball Rather get this thing a foot past the hole and have a downhill tap in from a foot than to leave it short because it's nothing more frustrating than leaving uphill putts for birdie or for par short. So downhill, remember, baby it. But remember, because it's going slower, it has more opportunity to take the break. So it has to take a, you have to take a bit more break, okay? You can't just boom it straight at the hole because you, you narrow your entrance. Now, if you're gonna baby it, you have to adjust the entrance to the hole and envision that ball coming in the side of the hole and then obviously hit it soft enough to be able to take that. Up the hill is the opposite. You're gonna take out some of the break because you're hitting it much firmer. So you don't have to take as much break as normal. You're gonna hit it a bit firmer up the hill and try hit the back of the jar instead of babying it in because when you baby it, the grain takes it, the hill takes it and you've lost your, you've lost your ball. players it's all too easy to just stand there with a box of three balls that you bought at the pro shop and just hammer putts just keep missing putts because all you do then is you practice missing putts now before your round I highly suggest going to putt one and two footers only with the pin out of the cup so you can hear the ball hitting the bottom of the cup that's the best sound in putting the best sound in all of golf if you can just hear that before your round you're gonna make more putts you're gonna have more confidence if you go stand there with three balls you just bought at the pro shop and you just miss every single one, what do you think you're going to think on the first green? When you do practice putting, an actual practice session, practice your pre-shot routine. What, why practice what you're not going to do on the course? Practice what you're going to do on the course. Put the ball down, read the break, line the ball up, do whatever you do with your coin marker, go through the process, practice stroke, and then hit the putt. Don't just jam putts all day missing them left right and center when you leave the putting green afterwards you go yeah my putting sucks practice your putting exactly how you would do it on the course now players I don't give Ina Scheiser about what they say about putting or science whatever whatever the data of getting the ball in the hole with the pin in pin out I don't care putting is an art and it's about feel now you can be as technically sound as you like but if you have no feel for the for the greens you have no feel for the slope what are you gonna do you're gonna be a road we're not robots okay we are people and we all have different techniques with all sorts of techniques it doesn't matter just practice do the drills get confident trust yourself trust the ground don't worry about people telling you you need to do this grip you need to hold the putter here 
you need to hold the putter like this you know you can only make putts a certain way it's all a load of Hullenscheiser okay now what you need to think about is yourself you need to teach yourself when you do these drills it'll give you feedback you take that feedback you adjust something you focus on the basics you focus on the fundamentals of putting don't get pulled into the crap you see on television if you want a new putter if you think your putter is crap that's fine because you're a person and putting is about feel so if you feel like shizer standing over the ball with your putter get another putter get another putter until you find a putter you love but only ever have one don't have two three four five putters unless you use one for slow greens fast greens grainy greens or bent grass that's fine but if you're going through putters just because you think your putter sucks after about the third one I think we need to look at something else sucking and not the putter. Now my most important thing when putting is the eye, mind and putter alignment. Okay, Mike Malaska talks about it, where you line your putter up to your line, you line your body up to that, your eyes must agree with where your putter is aimed, you must feel comfortable, you can move your head in a different direction until you feel your eyes are lined up with your putter. Now the first step is to line that putter up correctly to something in front of your ball on your line. Once you've lined that up, you then adjust. You know, you know it's lined up. Then you adjust your your head. You can be, you can putt from there, you can putt from there, from there, right over the ball. It's up to you. As long as your eyes say, yes, I'm lined up, and your brain goes, yes, we're all lined up, everything's lined up, we can make a good putt. Once you get those three things in alignment, the th holy trinity of putter face, eyes, and mind, you make putts. When you doubt a little bit where you're lined up, you doubt where it's going, you doubt the line, you doubt, you doubt your alignment, you're done. Finished. Your brain takes over and does auto corrections and you miss putts. Once your body agrees with everything you're saying to it, it makes good putts. Now there are many techniques when you're standing over the ball to make a putt. I personally like to look at the ball hit it and then once it's gone of two or three feet then i look up and watch it some people like for example some mid handicappers i play with are often very solid putters but they come up because they're anxious where the ball's going but they have a good stroke so so on seven oh fuck off so on seven and eight footers often it's very good to just look straight at the ball and hit your putt and wait for the, for the rattle in the cup that's technique one Te technique two is to actually look at the hole like J-Mac does that's I call the spicy eye salty mouth technique where you distract yourself from your stroke and you're not thinking about your stroke anymore you're actually just looking at the ball and letting your body take over a lot like Robin Matthew Williams talks about the no-look shot you can do no-look putting by looking at the hole now uh, the other option is to look at something just in front of your ball on your line actually stand over the ball look over here and make the putt to roll the ball over that thing and whether you make it or not it's okay as long as you've hit a good putt if you start missing putts but you've hit a good ball it's just the line you're not picking so practice your line reading and there's another technique where you just completely close your eyes and hope for the best but I don't recommend that personally when my brain is broken I like to use the looking at something on my line technique so maybe a foot or two in front of the ball I'll look at something I want to roll the ball over and then I'll start making putts again and I can go back to my normal technique you don't have to use these techniques periodically you can actually use them permanently and look at the hole and not your ball for the rest of your life if it makes putts if something works do it so here's the three techniques Okay, Mac. Righty. So, what do you think of your putting? Um, at the moment, we would probably give it what, like a, a one to a two out yeah, of five. Yeah, on your assessment, we gave it like a one to two. Yeah. And uh, Wasn't great. and what is the problem with it? What's your main problem? Do you think? Main problem? I let the demons in, and I get very stabby with my putts. You let the demons in. What yeah. do you mean demons? Look at the ball, look at the putt, and then I don't trust myself to hold it. Okay. And what happens normally when you do putt? What What's a bad putt? bad part for me is generally I'll 
like I'll proper poofy the thing like it'll go halfway to the hole and then the very next hole after that I get like Formula One brain and that thing's gone like a rock. <laughs> okay so it's distance control okay good so now what we're gonna do now is you're gonna take your fifth what is that 58? 58 degree yeah okay 58 degree and let's get some feel going okay so you're gonna oh. put those five balls to that flag red flag red flag okay now with this you just Now J Max gonna do this until he gets it right every single ball, just to within three feet of the hole. Once he's done that, then we can move on to using the putter again, which will instantly contrast with the feeling of using the wedge. But these drills are not just for nothing. You're teaching yourself. So what he wants to do is take a feeling from that. So when you do any drill, you want to get a feeling that you can transfer to your play on the course. So we're going to take the putter now, and we're going to get that same relaxed, fluid feeling and apply it to the putter. The contrast in feeling in your hands of putting with a wedge to putting with your general putter is that it's such a relief to have your putter in your hand again that you're going to fall in love with it. Okay, so this is immediately after finishing your wedge drill. Wedge drill, yeah. So let's go at the same hole. Try to remember that feeling that you can transfer from your wedge drill into your putting now. Just that same vibe you felt, that relaxation, the loss of expectation. Don't worry about holding, okay? We're not worrying yeah. about holding. Um, we're talking about distance control now because that's your big issue with the putting mm -hmm. is the distance control So it's looking great. Just getting that feeling of putting it in the same spot Boomer But a very solid stroke just the wrong wrong oh. distance for this this putt but a great stroke There we go, that's a good stroke. Okay, cool, oh. now let's do the... <laughs> now you see you've got it bro. I was going to say it's difficult to feel what normal is because I'm just doing what felt comfortable with see? the wedge. So now you got it. Yeah. So that's the, that's the secret is to... That becomes the normal. Is that, is that once you've trained your brain to let it go and just relax and be fluid mm. and get rid of the tension, you get distance control. I mean look at that. Yeah. One hold, 
one two that. inches in front, one six inches behind, one one foot behind, and then the other one about about three and a half feet. feet yeah. I mean, that's perfect, bro. Lovely. Perfect. Okay, good. There you go, look up here that is. Okay. Well, let's see. Yeah, we we'll just have to do a few. Just, I, was I, think say, you, I think you got this. I think same thing this. that we were doing at the range. Same thing, bro. No different out here. And it's even easier now because you're lining that line up to the line on the ruler and the line on your alignment aid. Everything comes in. Still do that though. See, so now what we can do is you can see how your, your ball was rolling on the putts, right? Mm. You see how it was like almost pure? Almost. Now, what this is going to do is going to fix that. Yeah. So, it, well, it, I think for me, it's a little bit of that follow through. My follow through does that. Yeah, bit. you see. So you're cutting so you wanna, across a little bit. I want to go a little bit straighter. So now what you can see is you can self-diagnose. Yeah. So like it wasn't 100% pure. Yeah. So you go to the ruler draw after. And you see why. Yeah. So now you get it. We'll tell you a lot. So we'll do this a bit and then we'll go do another few putts there and see if it's improved your pureness. Okay. Pure. Let's do it. Let's do it. There we go. Look how pure that was. Much better. Just that little feeling of keep the keep the face a little bit more right than pulling across it. No, it's an overcorrection. Overcorrection, yeah. Well, that was correcting the one that was actually pure. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, but with golf, you have to go to the opposite extreme and then find the middle ground. So if you then if you snap hooking it and then you slice it after some work, that's a result. That's a result. You and then somewhere it. in between there, you'll find it. You just then narrow it back down again, yeah. Okay, almost perfect. Let's better. do it again. Mm. But now this time, I want you to look at the hole. Okay. Yeah, okay, so look at the hole on this one. Get your brain out of it. Yeah. Okay, remember that's a bit stabby. That is a bit stabby. It felt stabby. It felt very stabby. It's the same concept here, okay? So it's the same concept of take it back and follow through. It's just yeah. a shorter follow, a shorter take back. Shorter, right? take, shorter back. take back. Just a little. Yeah, feel it, feel it. Taste it. Fuck, I want to play this course so badly. Okay, good, better, better, better. Now when you're practicing and you're not holding them immediately, don't get downhearted. Yeah. Just keep that process, trust the process. Because what happens in practice is that you may see some improvement the first time. You're not going to see it perfect. And if it's yeah. perfect, congratulations. But if you go out and you can see a 10% improvement, when you let it settle in and your mm. brain takes it in over the next three days mm. and you come back, you're going to see a 50% improvement. Then you practice it again, add another 10% yeah, on the range. Yeah, the marginal gain from there. Yeah, the marginal gain from there is that next time you go out, it's a 60% improvement. Yeah. So, just trust the process. Yeah. Pure putt, pure putt. Little stabby, little stabby, I wanted a bit more fluid. Okay, now when you're taking that practice stroke, there, you see now that to me is a better stroke. Because mm. the first one you're taking is back the same distance you follow through. Yeah. So then you, you, you're training yourself to decel. Yeah. Okay, so give me another one. Yeah, look at that, look at that. There you go. That's a good stroke. Look at that. Okay, cool. Now oh, bring them back. Again, four more without looking at, okay?
<laughs> what a difference, bro. Okay. Absolutely amazing. Absolutely. Yeah, but look at the distance control. Yeah, it's fine, I just thought it would go right. But you've got perfect distance control now. So we use that for the longer putts. Yeah. And then we need to now find a way of getting you to jam more of the shorter ones. Now players, if you do the circle drill, I highly suggest taking the pin out. Not just because of anything special in terms of the pin stopping the ball or not stopping the ball, but the sound of that ball hitting the bottom of the cup gives you so much confidence. That is the most confidence building sound in the whole of golf. Better than anything else. So I would suggest taking the pin out and that every time that ball goes in you hear that plastic sound. Once the, ball, once the hole fills up with balls, take them out and then you reset, okay? There are a few tour pros who also like to practice not, not looking at the ball when they do these putts. They actually just look at the hole. My friend Harvey putts exclusively inside six feet by looking at the hole and he is absolutely deadly. Now, that's up to you. If you want to putt or looking down, I highly suggest looking down non-stop. Don't even look up. I want you to hear the rattle of the ball hitting the back, the bottom of the cup, okay? That is the most important sound in golf. So if you find that you're pretty good, from inside eight feet but you want to be great don't look up wait for the rattle it's a very old adage I think it may be from Gary Player my countryman who can do 7,000 push-ups in a day and but now that works because you are just focusing on keeping your head down having a pure stroke or if that doesn't feel good to you you can look at the hole okay so you can putt while looking at the hole you don't even look at the ball you just trust your stroke you have another option where you can look at the hole, the mark that you're starting the ball on. So if you've picked a mark in front of your ball that you want to start it on, look at that mark. That's fine too. So you're just looking at that mark, a foot in front of your ball, and getting the ball started on that line, and trusting the speed control will be there automatically. And often it comes down to your brain, uh, getting obsessed with the ball or your backstroke or something like that. So eliminate all that stuff and give one of those four options a try. So do this, okay? Now we've established that maybe you like to um, not look at the, the ball. Let's try it without looking at the ball. So line everything up to that, that pitch mark. Show me the pitch mark. Okay, I got the pitch mark there. Okay, there, okay. So you want to line it up deadly to that pitch mark. Get your putter face lined up. Get your eyes to agree with you. Your mind must be at ease. And then you're going to look at the hole and stroke it. Good putt. Okay. okay, so J-Mac's been working on his putting over here. He's been having a torrid time on the course, so we worked on a few things. And we found a new technique, it's called the, it's called the spicy eye salty mouth technique, where if you have chili in your eye, you eat salt. Yeah. By eating so much salt, you start to think, damn, I'm thirsty. And you forget about the chili in your eye, right? Pretty much. So, what are you doing now? Because before you... Had the boo-boo jibbies with the putts. Yeah, big time. And that was always getting more focused on looking at the ball, making sure, okay, am I getting the perfect takeaway? Am I going back far enough? Am I following through enough? And immediately as I started doing that, my hands start going tighter and tighter and tighter and, uh, and then like you lose half all the shaky, feel. half nervous. So like every time I did it, I'd look at the ball and I'd start taking the putter away and notice that I'm either dragging it and going, no, no, I don't want to do that. Or I'd take it away and I'd feel it twisting as I go. And again, I'd have to stand up and go, that doesn't feel right at all. Okay, so your, your head is full of worms. Head is way full of worms. So you're looking at that ball thinking like, take it, take it away properly. And then you take it away. And because you're thinking about taking it away properly, 
you actually not take your weight properly and then you doubt yourself which means missed putts yeah so now much. we with the long putts we made you start just looking at the hole right now very what much. did that do that actually controlled my distance a lot more and i felt that every time i stopped actually looking at the putter and just relaxing feeling where the hole's going to it would just go back smoothly the takeaway would be great and it'll go nice and smooth through. Just natural. Natural. No, no headworms. No headworms. Okay, so now yesterday's round, we noticed that something like the eight footers, ten footers, nine footers yeah. was either booming past yeah. or staying short. So have you worked on those yet or not? Um not big time, big time, but yes. just So what have you been doing? We've been doing three three to four to five or in and around the hole and then from there the longer ones from like me down to the white flag down there okay. away. Just distance control just distance and control. and lag and then the short putts after a lag putt or a and chip. Then the short putt after, yeah. Okay, so these you're actually quite solid on. Sometimes you do do you do do a bit of a, I notice a bit of a decel. Yeah. And obviously that's a headworm. Yeah. Because if it's you can putt a lag putt, you can putt a short putt. I was gonna say it's as soon as I felt like okay I've taken that way too far back, even though I'm looking at something, it still goes that okay I need to go slowly through this thing. Okay. Yeah. So then you're going too far back. Your brain's saying there's no way you're gonna make a three footer with that backstroke. Yeah. Or that backswing. Now you're yeah. gonna like yeah. poofies. Yeah. Cool. Okay, so you so let's let's see that putt now. Might so just you, be picking the wrong point. Okay, so now come back behind the ball, find your point, and then show me how this works. Okay, so pick something pretty much there. Okay, let's see how it goes. So the successful putt here is actually getting it over that line. Over Whether you make line. it or not is actually irrelevant yeah. because if you can get it started over a line, all you ever have to do is change your line. Yeah. Okay. It's then just lining it up properly. Okay, cool. So you just started that over the line you chose. Yeah. And no headworms, no thinking about no. takeaway, just a natural stroke. Okay, Very cool. Much. Move this one a bit further back. Let's see, this is a bit of a left to right, so maybe. Like so not, not too much, no. Let's do the short ones. Just keep circle drill. Yeah, I like that. Perfect. Okay, so we got left to right ish. I'm thinking, I know that I want to be this side of the cup to start with, so I'd almost in my mind try and draw draw like sort of a bit of a break into it. Okay, so what point are you going to put it over? So here, I'd almost be looking... Not almost, exactly where? Yeah. I'm not going to be going over straight over that. I want to be going a little to the left of Okay, cool. Side. So let's see you do that. Are you Now, when you're looking, are you looking... Are you looking... I'm not going to be looking at that. I'm going to pick something You're more. looking there or...? I'm going to be picking something more here. So you're not looking here? No, because if I look there on this one, I'm probably going to end up by that friction ball past the hole there. Okay. This just helps me not, like, basically not give it a good old wallop okay not smash looking, it past the hole yeah by looking a little shorter okay yeah, yeah. good putt but yeah. you just picked the wrong line yeah pretty much okay cool so then once you can get it started on a line and that's a good pace it's about about, I don't know, foot three quarters past. of a foot past the hole. Yeah. That's a good pace. So once you can do that, you just have to start adjusting your lines. Yeah. And then you'll start making more putts. That's it. Cool. Let's try another two. Top. Line and envisioning too much. I think you've got good feel with your putts. Yeah. I don't think you need to worry too much. So well, it's like basically just to help me get it get it going as I look at the hole, kind of draw it back to my ball and then look back along to the hole. That way I know that's where I need to go. Okay. Let's see. So, shorter ones, maybe it doesn't work as well as the longer ones. Yeah. That might be it. Good putt. Okay, so I was okay. looking at there and wanted to go over there. So you're looking at something on the line, hey? Yeah, something okay. along the line. Okay, so now let's move this one back another foot or so. Okay, cool. Now show me where... Where are you? Where are you looking? Show me the exact point your eyes are going to be on now okay, for this now, part. For this one. So stand over it and yeah. then show me where. What exactly? So you look at it. Yeah, I look at it. I'm kind of looking at this is coming. No, 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 kind of. Yeah, no, kind of. No, no, this is 
all coming down there. So okay, so you show me the exact point that you're looking at, because I want to understand. Show exact me where point. it is. Where is it? I'm looking there. You're looking over there. So you're yeah. assuming this is right to left from just outside the right, right lip. Right to left, just outside the right lip. So okay, let's see. There. So now when you set up to this, you're looking at that spot. Looking at that spot. Okay, yeah. cool. Maybe yeah, a bit so I, just, I wouldn't have taken that line because I think it's more of a straight putt. Is it? But if you hit the putt, you won. Yeah. Now that's important. Yeah. And that's the important part of putting is that, yeah, you might not make them here on the practice screen, but you have to learn from the feedback. You're teaching yourself. Yeah. So now you know I can hit the putt on the line I want. Yeah. You're just not picking the right line. Oh, so yes. now you have to pick the right line. So if we take that back to where we were, we're about. Left over here. Left, oh, left, yeah. left, left. Up, up, up to your foot. Yeah, maybe Perfect. there. So if we call it there and I was looking outside right cup, try adjust it in, maybe look sort of almost straight. Yeah, go straight and I want you to see if you can look at this point right here. That's exactly the one. Right there. Wait, wait, wait. So you're gonna look at this point over here. Yeah. There's a little that's there's a little there's a little like hole in the green here. Yeah. Okay, so you're looking mark. at that, okay? Now that's if you can get the ball started over that. That's a good putt, regardless of miss or hit or in. Yeah. Yeah, good putt. Good so putt. You see. Yeah. So once you've, so once you've got your technique down, that you can get the ball started on a line. Yeah. And you can get the pace right. Just pick the line. Just pick the line.